time. Welcome to the first Fast Talk of 2016, and to kick off the new year, tonight we'll be chatting with the always interesting Kyle Petty. We'll catch up with Lee Spencer from Motorsports.com, and our co-host is Wendy Venturini, right here on Fast Talk. It's Fast Talk on the Performance Racing Network, presented by Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans, the most comfortable jeans you will ever wear. Guaranteed. Wrangler. Real. Comfortable. Jeans. And brought to you by Napa. Stop by your local Napa Auto Parts store and conquer the job with Napa know-how. By Wix. Visit Wix Filter's Facebook page and share your love for engines. Wix. We love engines. Advance Auto Parts. Advance Auto Parts introduces Speed Perks, a simple rewards program for guys who love getting under the hood. And now, here's your host for Fast Talk, Doug Rice. Welcome to the initial Fast Talk of 2016. I'm Doug Rice, joined tonight by Wendy Venturini. A little bit later, we'll catch on up with Kyle Petty. I'm Kyle, of course, uh, just getting back from Wyoming and his honeymoon, so we'll find out about all that's going on in Kyle Petty's life and find out what he thinks about the upcoming race season later on from motorsport.com. Uh, one of the best in the business, Lee Spencer, will join us. We'll get her to forecast 2016 and talk about people fresh back from their honeymoon. Even though she did not honeymoon, our own Alicia Lingerfeld is not Alicia Lingerfeld anymore, Wendy. I know. That's amazing. I came in the studio and I heard Alicia Smoot. And yes. I forgot. You know, she's changed her name. She just got married last week. All right. We may, we may let Alicia chime in on that because she's yeah. never been bashed a little bit later on. So great to have everyone. Hope you had a wonderful Christmas and New Year's season and that everything went smooth for you. Uh, this has been, Wendy, without a doubt, at least in my memory, which is not great. The quietest off season that I can ever remember. It really has. And you know, it's been kind of nice. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of disconnected from the NASCAR world for a while. It's hard to do. It's really difficult when you're a media member to disconnect because the moment you do is the moment you miss things. And so you really never truly disconnect from what's happening in our in our industry. But um, there wasn't um, major breaking news or something that we didn't think about. Of course, um, we lost a few people in the community. But when you look at what happened with major changes with crew chiefs, it was very minimal. And we'll get to a lot of those on Fast Talk tonight. And um, it's been pretty quiet. I'm impressed. You know, when you look at, at the moving around of drivers, it was almost nil. I mean, the fact Sam Hornish Jr. out at Richard Petty Motorsports, Brian Scott brought in because he brings some finances with himself. And that that is almost it with, you know, of course, the retirement of Jeff Gordon that moves uh, Chase Elliott up into that spot. And for the most part, that is that is the – biggest part of the changes that most race fans are going to recognize absolutely now of course we had a lot of crew chief yep. changes but that's a little bit more detailed for anyone following those storylines and we'll get to those soon you know mike wheeler is going to take over as the crew chief for denny hamlin this was announced about a week ago and mike's a guy that's worked his way up through the ranks he was a driver at one time and he's going to be calling the shots for the 11 cars joe gibbs kind of moved around some some players there, but obviously Jason Ratcliffe stays where he's at, and then you don't mess with your championship team either. No, no, you don't. So Wheels and Denny Hamlin have worked together for many years in the past um, and obviously worked together on the Xfinity side most recently and have several victories together. So they're a great combination. I think um, that's going to work out. Jason Radcliffe, of, of course, stays with Matt Kenseth. And um, so the other change comes to Carl Edwards, crew chief, and Darian Grubb. Um, moving on from that position and Dave Rogers moving into that role with Carl Edwards in the 19 team. You cannot afford to stay static in this business. You have no. to keep moving pieces around to try to find a way to move forward. So, you know, in, and, and Gibbs, I think, and I'm not just saying this because I know you have ties to Joe Gibbs racing. I think they are the best deepest team in NASCAR right now as a singular team. Yeah, and they really were willing to make a change. You know, I was kind of shocked because I thought Darian and Carl made a good combination, but something wasn't working out. 
chemistry wise and somebody stepped up to the plate wanted to make that change and whether it was Carl or somebody within the organization but no doubt the change was made and I'm looking forward to seeing what Dave Rogers uh, the chemistry he has with Carl Leppard. I know I think it's interesting because Carl said this he interviewed Dave Rogers before they hired him he says I don't want to just be paired up with somebody I want to sit down and talk to them and find out can we communicate can we get along do we have the same thought processes and at the end of the day, do we respect each other? And so that, that I, I, I kind of give Carl credit for being mature enough to want to do that. Yeah, and Carl has a unique personality. And I say that in, in the most loving way because I really appreciate his personality and, and what he brings to the table. He's very um, active, uh, even though he lives in another state and he will fly from Missouri over to North Carolina every week for that team meeting. So he is in the building at Joe Gibbs Racing and is an active part of that organization. Right. So. Kudos to him. I'm going to ask Kyle this. I'll ask Lee Spencer this, but I want to get Wendy Venturini's take on it. If Jeff Gordon was the man in the garage, he was the guy who could speak and everybody listens. He was the EF Hutton of the garage. NASCAR went to him. Other drivers. He, at one time, Earnhardt was that person. I think Gordon accepted that mantle a little bit. Who is the next the man in the garage? Who who steps up? Who's the next man up in the garage that is the unofficial spokesperson for the drivers? Uh, I would say Matt Kenseth. Really? Kevin Harvick. Do you like that one? I, I, <laughs> Kevin Harvick, I can see more than Matt Kenseth, especially since I kind of think Kenseth might be a little bit in the NASCAR doghouse right now. True. Uh, true that. <laughs> and I could I'm going off of years yeah. of experience. I, I can I can understand that. Uh, Who do we all listen to? We all listen to Dale Jr. Dale Jr. is is the other one. I mean, yeah. and even though five years ago I couldn't have imagined him assuming the mantle of being the guy that would go in and talk, the Dale Jr. we've seen the last couple of years could do that. Now. Absolutely. A lot more mature Dale Earnhardt Jr. And um, just really, uh, he's really into it. I, I I'm not going to say he wasn't into his career five years ago, but there's a different level that he's yeah. brought to the table now. And with he and Amy, whatever it is, whatever she is bringing out in him, it's done him good. And he's gotten really comfortable with the cameras, with the media, with the fans, and I just love it. Different guy. I think he could be that man now. He respects NASCAR. He respects mm -hmm. the history of the sport. He has – He. It, it's an interesting chain here. He is so popular. And so ingrained in the sport that when he speaks, NASCAR is almost forced to listen to what he has well, to say. Because the fans are listening yes. to him. Yeah. He has the fans' attention, you know. so he has to have everybody else's yeah. attention as well. So there may be a little bit of the tail wagging the dog there, but I, I think if he wanted to take on that role, he could be that guy in the garage that when something controversial happens or whatever the case might be, he could be the guy out front speaking his mind do you think kenseth is still in the doghouse clean slate new year what do you think Ooh, it happened late last year i don't know <laughs> uh, nascar's got a long memory santa claus is always watching <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I mean you know i i mean i don't think that nascar would do anything punitive to him now i think that punishment's been doled out and that's been dealt with he sat out his two races i'm hoping that that is the case that it's all clean and you know, you start fresh. But I I don't know. I've never seen Matt as that personality that would be the guy that would be the go-to guy in the garage. He is knowledgeable. He is ultimately well-respected. I found out how well-respected he was after the whole Logano Kinza brouhaha when practically 90% of the drivers in the garage came to his defense. Yeah, they, they sided. Yeah. Definitely sided. Maybe they just didn't like the other side. Ooh. <laughs> That's probably what it was, right? You know, it was. It's funny, Wendy. This whole that whole flap with Kenseth and Logano. Uh, I'm not sure how Joey Logano got painted with the villain's brush, but he, he sure did. And he, he did. He'll have. He's going to have to live with that for a little while. Yeah, that's going to take some time to to get over. I like Joey Logano. He's actually a pretty decent guy. People. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's actually a very decent guy. He's not. You know, he's he's not the guy that's going to go out and get in trouble. He's not a hell raiser. He's he's a pretty calm and collected guy. And I sat with him at the Myers Brothers luncheon out in Las Vegas. And 
we talked extensively about it, and he basically said, I'm not going to listen to all the noise. I'm going to be the guy that I am. And he goes, if if I'm true to myself, then I guess, you know, things will turn around. Yeah. And I, and I thought that was pretty, pretty good advice, especially from the guy that's just 25 years old. Coming up, we chat with our Kyle Petty. He's a little more than 25. He's aged well. Barely. We'll, we'll catch up with Kyle Petty. And later on from motorsport.com, it's Lee Spencer. Putting it away for winter or getting it ready for cold weather? Your two- or four-stroke gas or diesel engine could use ZMAX Microlubricant in its crankcase and fuel system. ZMAX Microlubricant penetrates metal at the molecular level. It's added protection during cold starts and heavy-duty use. In snow and leaf blowers, ATVs, hunting trucks, everyday driver, or storing your collector car, chainsaws, boat motors, tractors, and private aircraft, ZMAX Microlubricant is performance you can feel at most auto parts retailers. Read the testimonials at ZMAX.com. We're coming to the line. We're getting revved up. And when the green flag drops, green, green, green. we're going zero to 180 in the blink of an eye. NASCAR is heading back to Vegas. The 2016 Cobalt 400, March 4th through 6th. Bright lights, high speeds, all out action, and all your favorite drivers vying for the top spot in the hottest town on Earth. Reserve your weekend tickets now at 800-644-4444 or LVMS.com. NASCAR in Vegas. Turn up the party. Matt Kids, it looks like he's been shot out of a cannon. Fast Talk, presented by Wrangler, returns in a moment. This is PRN. The Performance Racing Network. Join me, Lenny Baticki, each week for PRN's At The Track. We cover grassroots racing and speak with the stars of short track, dirt track, legends, and kart racing. Racers like Jimmy Owens, Billy Moyer, Chris Madden, Daniel Hemrick, Bubba Pollard, Burt Myers, Carson Ferguson, Jerry Mullis, and more. To hear PRN's At The Track, check GoPRN.com for a broadcast station near you or listen to PRN's At The Track online at GoPRN.com. Hi, I'm Chrissy Newman, wife of NASCAR driver Ryan Newman. Together we have created Rescue Ranch, a humane education facility in Statesville, North Carolina. Ryan and I wanted to take a moment to say thank you to our wonderful volunteers and generous donors at Rescue Ranch. We truly could not do it without you. To find ways you can help us make a difference, visit RescueRanch.com and click on How to Help. We look forward to seeing you at Rescue Ranch. Welcome back to Fast Talk here on PR in the Performance Racing Network. And, Wendy, you know, it's funny. NASCAR has the longest season, but it seems like we drive to Daytona and then suddenly we're back at Homestead and it's over. And then in a blink of an eye, we're into a new year. Yeah, I saw uh, the seven Sundays until the Daytona 500. Yeah. It just seems crazy. You know. I like Larry McReynolds a lot, except for his countdown. He, he can't. I hate the countdown thing. I don't like the countdown. Kyle either. Petty, do you like Larry McReynolds' countdown to Daytona immediately after the season ends or not? No, it comes every February. I mean, all you got to do is have a calendar. You know, you don't need to count me down. <laughs> Kyle, we love you. Congratulations, man! I haven't spoke to you on your recent wedding and and I guess honeymoon you just returned from. Honeymoon, and then went uh, with the family to Wyoming. Uh, went my mom, my sisters, and my dad. We you got a place out there, and I'm speaking to you guys. As um, since I just got married, I'm in Bed Bath and Beyond <laughs> trying to get some kitchen utensils. So that's where I'm. I'm, I'm no, calling in. From Bed no, Bath it's come to that, life. Kyle. It has come to that. <sighs> it has come to that. While 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 you get to go see Star Wars, I'm at Bed Bath. <laughs> <laughs> because Kyle Petty cannot register for anything. <laughs> Well, candlesticks are always nice. Do what? It's a, candlesticks are always a nice gift. <laughs> always, always a nice gift. Always a nice gift. And you know you can divide those up, so that's always special too. <laughs> so that's good, just in case it doesn't work out. Well, congrats, <laughs> not on being in Bed Bath & Beyond, but uh, on your recent marriage. I think that's awesome. Morgan is outstanding. And did you see any winter? We have not had any here in the southeast this year in Wyoming. Man, it was, yes, it was, uh, we were there for, um, it was crazy. I went to, uh, my sister has a house 
um, down in, in the Bahamas. So I went there for my honeymoon. It was 85. Landed at home in North Carolina, jumped on another plane, and went to Wyoming. And when we landed, it was 20 below. Um, and it, it was basically anywhere from zero to 15 below the whole time I was out there. So I've seen all the winter I want to see for the rest of the year. I'm telling you, plenty of winter out there. Fantastic. You see any wildlife? You see any elk, any moose, anything roaming around? Okay, here's what we saw. No joke. So, okay. um, saw some elk. Saw plenty of elk. Okay. Um, saw five or six moose. Um, Moose or meese, whatever they are, <laughs> uh, saw them. And then we went to uh, and went to this place just outside of Jackson Hole where there's wild buffalo. Yeah. Saw a bunch of buffalo. Um, saw some mountain goats. Saw some rams. Ooh, you saw, rams. you saw bighorn sheep? Bighorn sheep, yep, saw a bunch of that. Uh, but the coolest thing, coolest thing, riding down the road one day and setting like right in the middle of, um, of a river was a bald eagle um, who had just caught a fish. And was sitting there protecting the fish as he ate it. You know what I mean? And that was wicked. When you see something like that in the wild, that that was the coolest thing seeing the eagle. Did you uh, did you take pictures and tweet about it on your either honeymoon or your trip to Wyoming? I actually disconnected from social media, and it was fabulous. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I am, and and I have done this, and you you know how I'm on Twitter like constantly, uh, but and and hammering people, and people are hammering me. But from the last of the last race to Daytona, I basically I'll say nice things, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, stuff like that. But I don't tweet. I don't. I don't want people to know what I'm doing or where I'm at. That's my downtime. That's my private time. Well, you just let everyone know you're at Bed Bath and Beyond now. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. Sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> You can you can never get out of there for less than one hundred and fifty dollars. By the way, unless you no, use their you know coupon, what? their twenty percent yeah. coupon. <laughs> they got great coupons, and you know what else they got? That they got that one section as seen on TV. The stuff you're too embarrassed to buy off of TV. Wow. <laughs> you go to Bed Bath and Beyond and buy it. Okay, yeah, maybe they've got that like that thing that uh, uh, chews off your toenails. That's exactly what I'm looking for right now. The toenail grinder. And it's got a little light on it. So yeah, it. yeah. Please stop. No, I think that would be awesome. You that know, you can awesome. get two for 20 bucks, Kyle. So if you get two, I'll pay you $10 for the other okay. one. Okay, I'm, I'm telling you, man, I am on a mission to get one. So if I get one, I'll, I'll bring it in next time I'm there. All right. You got to take care of your nails. <laughs> That's exactly right. You really got to do that. Hey, Kyle, can we, can we keep you for just another... Uh, a couple of minutes here to take a quick break because I did want to actually talk about some racing. Although your 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 cuticle and nail conditioning is very important for me. Uh, yeah, I'll go, know, man. Just, all right. Go walk there. around the kitchen all dishes. Right. Kyle Petty, <laughs> while he makes it down aisle 12 in Bed Bath & Beyond, we'll be right back. The smartest way for you to get the lowest prices on your plane tickets, domestic or international, is to call SmartFares first or last, but you've got to call us before you book your plane tickets. Fly anywhere in the world, fly anywhere in the U.S., and SmartFares can save you up to 75% on your plane tickets. We have the lowest airline ticket prices on over 500 airlines, and you've got a great 12-hour free cancellation window. Plus, with our live agent help you can always get fast help and fast answers so on your next trip maybe today maybe tomorrow how about right now pick up your phone and call smart fares plus save up to 75 percent in your plane reservation so call right now 800-989-0233 800-989-0233 800-989-0233 800-989-0233 here comes the battle for the lead jimmy johnson wants to take it away we've got more fast talk presented by wrangler on the way this is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Putting it away for winter or getting it ready for cold weather? Your two- or four-stroke gas or diesel engine could use ZMAX microlubricant in its crankcase and fuel system. ZMAX microlubricant penetrates metal at the molecular level. It's added protection during cold starts and heavy-duty use. In snow and leaf blowers, ATVs, hunting trucks, everyday driver, or storing your collector card, chainsaws, boat motors, tractors, and private aircraft, ZMAX microlubricant is performance you can feel at most auto parts retailers. Read the testimonials at ZMAX.com. 
If it's happening in NASCAR, you'll hear it on PRN's Garage Pass. It's a no-holds-barred Wild Wild West. It's stupid. You know, he just took a coward cheap shot at us. Don't wreck Matt Kenseth. I'll tell you that right now. Do not wreck that boy. This sport, in a lot of ways, isn't meant to be under control. I definitely feel NASCAR is very consistent in being inconsistent on calls. And for us, it's more about wanting to prove people wrong. I feel like we've been as sloppy as we've been in two years. It's one of my finest moments I've ever had. Check us out at GoPRN.com. Fast talk. Kyle Petty is out taking care of his domestic duties, and he's nice enough to drop in with us. Of course, Kyle is a regular co-host here on Fast Talk. Kyle, removing yourself from uh, the mundane chores that you have in front of you right now, I ask Wendy this, and I'd like your opinion. Uh, If Jeff Gordon was sort of the guy in the garage who could get in front of the media and make the case for the drivers or be the guy that went to NASCAR and said something, well, he's not there now. Who's the next man up? Good question. Thank um, you. You know, I, I I don't know. I think um, yeah, I, I think some the guys who really think about it um, are I, I think Jeff. I, I think Jimmy thinks about it. Jimmy thinks about where the sport is, where the sport's going, where the sport can be. I think Junior, as much as anybody out there thinks about the history of the sport, has an appreciation for the history of the sport, what it's meant, where it's been, what it, what it can do and what it can't be. Uh, you know, the question is, is, are those guys willing to step up and do stuff? You know, Dale Sr. was always willing to be that guy uh, that went to the trailer. Jeff's always been that guy willing to go to the trailer. And there's other guys that are out there um, that are willing to go to the trailer when they benefit from it, um, but not it's just for 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 them. It's a, it's more selfish reasons. I don't think Jeff Jeff was as selfish about stuff. He saw the big picture of the sport. So I, I, I don't know. I think that'll that'll evolve over the over. I, I think over the next year or two. You know, it wasn't like somebody just stepped up after after Dale Senior's accident. I, I think it'll evolve. But um, and it may be somebody we're not even thinking about. To be totally honest with you, uh, that that's not even been mentioned. But I I don't know. That's a tough question, and there's a lot of responsibility. What I do think is different now is this driver council thing. Um, they do have a voice. They do have a collective voice, and they are willing. They are able to sit down as a group and talk and go in. So you don't depend on that one, you know, Richard Petty or Dale Earnhardt Sr. or Daryl Walter or, or Jeff Gordon to walk up in that truck and represent everyone. Uh, these guys have a voice, and they have a collective voice now. Kyle, explain that to the fans at home, the driver, driver council, and how – it's changed the landscape and approaching NASCAR and, and through the years, if you've seen it um, evolve over the years. You know, NASCAR's always had an open door policy. I, I don't, you know, I, I'll criticize them with the best of them and, and praise them uh, when, when I think they do something right. But at the same time, that door's always open to Helton's office uh, until Donald's office and those guys, you can walk in and talk to them uh, and, and, and hear their point of view and let, let them try to explain it. And they'll listen to your point of view. Um, but I think what, what NASCAR has tried to do with the driver council um, was to do what was best not for the individual driver but for the collective drivers uh, and for the sport itself and to get those guys in and say, listen, uh, when this goes on, if we're all pulling in the same direction, the sport moves forward. If just four of you are pulling in one direction and 20 of you are pulling in another direction, we're, we're just going to be stagnant here for a while. So I, I think the council has changed um, the, the, the garage area, because now as a younger driver, and you take a driver that's just coming into the sport, you take a, a Ricky Stenhouse, you take a Danica Patrick, you take somebody who's been in the sport for a couple of years and is getting a feel for the sport, they know they can go to Junior or Denny or somebody like that, and their voice is going to be heard. It doesn't necessarily have to come from them. Their voice is going to be heard through that council. Uh, so I, I do believe it's given a voice and given um, the, the people that are maybe not uh, the guys that are winning the championships and winning the races and they're in the news week in and week out, it gives them a voice. So I, I do believe that the garage area as a whole, uh, they feel like they have a voice in that trailer. Chase Elliott inherits one of the most treasured rides in the history of NASCAR. He jumps into the 24 car, not replacing Jeff Gordon, but replacing him in that chair. 
How how tough is that going to be for him, Kyle? You know what? I, I don't know. That that is a that's a that's going to be the question that that I think is on a lot of fans' mind and a lot of people watching. I, I did an interview with him, he and Bill last year. Yeah, it's uh, fantastic, by the way. Yeah, yeah. At, at Darlington, and you know, I said, "What, what in God's name are you thinking? You jump in a car and you drive the number nine, which was your dad's number, the most popular guy in NASCAR, Bill, billion dollar Bill. You did this, and now you're with." taking on the next bit of pressure with Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. You're not changing the number or anything. And, and you know, I don't think it phases him. I don't, I don't think he looks at that. But I do believe it's whether that team becomes Chase's team or if that team stays Jeff's team. And what I mean by that is I, I think Joey Logano went through a horrendous time, it, it, looking back on it, sometimes over at Gibbs, where he stepped into Tony's team, and that was still Tony's team. With Zippadelli there, with that crowd, that was still a Tony Stewart team. Just Joey Logano was driving. I, I think if, if Joey had had his own team, that may have been different. I'm not going to say he would have run better or run worse, but I'm just saying it would have been his team. It's, it's whether this team becomes Chase's team or if everybody still looks at this team, take the number off the card, take all that pressure away. The team has to be behind Chase Elliott. And if the team's behind Chase Elliott, uh, then we'll see something out of him. Kyle, with 2016 upon us, uh, we said goodbye to Jeff Gordon. Now we have this whole year to send off Tony Stewart. What does Tony Stewart have to do to make it a stellar final year in the Sprint Cup Series? Show and, up. And can he? <laughs> show up. All Tony has to do is show up. You know, and I said the same thing for Jeff. All Jeff has to do is show up. Those guys, that, that when you reach the caliber or the status of a Jeff Gordon, of a Tony Stewart, of a Jimmy Johnson, Guys like that, when you reach that count, that status in this sport, um, it's not going to change anybody's opinion of who you are in one single year. All you have to do is show up at the racetrack uh, and, and do what you love to do, which is drive a race car. That's what the fans want to see you do. Yeah, they want to meet you. Yeah, they want to have their photo taken with you. They want to see that last race. They want to see that last Daytona 500. But at the same time, you know, it, it's like I, I look at guys like that as, as, as artists, really, and it's like, this is going to be the last time we get to see them paint. Uh, and this is going to be the last time that you're going to get to see a masterpiece come out of one of them. Uh, and we were fortunate with Jeff Gordon to see he finally he got his masterpiece at Martinsville. Will, will Tony Stewart be able to do that this year? You know, it's, it's, I revert back to what Jeff said. I want it. I don't need it. And I think Tony's the same way. He wants to win. He wants to run good. But does he need it for his legacy and does he need it for that and for the fans? I don't think so. Uh, I think he just has to show up and, and be – gracious and be the guy he is well kyle thank you for your time congrats on your recent marriage can't wait to see you again so i know you'll be in here co-hosting fast talk throughout the year and we'll probably lay eyes on you when we're all down in daytona here in about a month i can't wait man all right kyle thanks a bunch kyle petty of uh Kyle Kyle serves lots of masters these days, doesn't he? NBC and PRN. He's been a longtime co-host on the show. And uh, one thing I will give Kyle, he is you ask him a question, you get an honest, well thought out response. Absolutely. Every time. We love Kyle. You know, I'm so happy for him on I, his recent I marriage. Too. I wonder how much shopping Morgan did while we were doing that interview for Fast Talk. Uh, the cart mm. at Bed Bath & Beyond. Well, could have gone She'll... over the 150 mark. Easy, couldn't it? Yeah. The 20% coupon's going to pay off. <laughs> uh, you know, I, this probably won't happen, but I'm on the panel that gets to vote for the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. That's a tough job, by the yeah. way. It is. It is. And there's a lot. And no, no one in that room, I can't say no one, I think the vast majority of the people in that room that vote take that very seriously. Mm-hmm. And they go in. As they should. And, and you might have, you vote on five people every year. You go in and you probably have two in your mind that you're locked in on. And then the other one, people are up there debating. There's lots of discussion. And I don't know if Kyle's will ever come up for discussion there because he only won eight races and no titles. But we talk about people, well, they did this, and then they had this career. And you look, I don't know if there is another person that has been such a splendid ambassador mm-hmm. for the NASCAR universe than Kyle Petty. You took the words out of my mouth, ambassador, because that's what, exactly what I think of when I think of Kyle Petty. He just, he he speaks everything NASCAR, and he lives it, and he breathes it, and he shares that passion with the fans, no matter what he's doing and in he the industry. And he goes and creates a camp 
it's for awesome. kids that are sick so they can enter- be entertained for a week out of mm-hmm. their lives and that that's so fundamental and so probably doesn't get him into the hall of fame but he should be recognized for absolutely you know i don't know if we have a humanitarian award or whatever that can be given to him but i think he's well deserved and i'm not just saying that because he's a friend of the network um he's he's a friend of people he's just such a good person so coming up another really good person lee spencer motorsports.com she's their lead writer and we're going to ask her about what she thinks nascar might be doing plus a couple other good questions here on fast talk Z-Max Micro Lubricant, famous for making engines run better and last longer, has something new for gun owners. Z-Max for guns. A two-bottle system with a bore cleaner, conditioner, and a bolt lube. Originally designed for M4s and AR-15s, it'll protect and lubricate the finish and moving parts of any handgun, rifle, or shotgun. Z-Max Micro Lubricant works on heavy-duty engines every day. It'll work on and in your favorite firearms, too. Find out more at ZMAX.com. NASCAR returns to the historic Atlanta Motor Speedway for the Fools of Honor Quick Trip 500 weekend, February 26th to the 28th. Experience the high-speed thrills of one of racing's original super speedways. Starting as low as $39, it's one of NASCAR's most affordable deals. Plus, don't worry about the weather. We've got you covered with a perfect race weather guarantee. Be a part of racing history in 2016. Call 877-9-AMS-TICKS or visit amsracetix.com. race fans on their feet. Put Junior out front. We'll have more of Fast Talk presented by Wrangler in just a moment. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. I'm Paul Shad in Charlotte with Kathy Martindale in Nashville here on Z-Max Racing Country from PRN. We are so proud of bringing you the best singers in country music and the biggest stars in NASCAR. Now it's Kathy and Tim McGraw. When you think of country music, who's the first person you think of? I think when somebody thinks of country music, you automatically think of Hank Williams or, or even Hank Jr. I mean, they're, they're such iconic names. the new Charlotte Motor Speedway app today and start receiving race day updates, exclusive content, and personalized deals on tickets and experiences right on your phone. This all-new mobile experience helps you find up-to-the-minute event schedules, driver appearances, great ticket packages, events maps, and the best concessions and much more. Look for the Charlotte Motor Speedway app in the App Store or on Google Play. Thanks a lot to Kyle Petty for giving up valuable shopping time at Bed Bath and Beyond. Bed Bath and Beyond to be with us here on Fast Talk. I'm I'm really curious what they um, purchased while he was interviewing on Fast Talk. It, I mean, talking the, NASCAR buying kitchens. The male utensils. genome doesn't do <laughs> as well there, and I'm being totally sexist as as women normally do. Is that a fair statement? Um, you no, know, that's fair. I'll tell you. There is a store called Bye Bye Baby. It's owned by Bed Bath and yes. Beyond. And when I uh, was pregnant with my son, who's now five, uh, it is overwhelming. Yeah. I don't care if you're male or female. I walked in and I wanted to vomit. <laughs> 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 There's just baby stuff from floor to the ceiling all around you, surrounding you. And I was like, get I me out really of here. I am really glad they're not an advertiser. <laughs> all right. We go now to our next guest, and she writes extremely well from motorsports.com, Lee Spencer. Lee, how are you? Hi, Lee. I'm great. How are you guys tonight? Good. good. Are you at home? No, I'm down at um, Hendrick uh, Honda. Uh, My son is is looking to buy a car, and so I'm doing mommy duty tonight. Really? I love it. So what would mommy want him to buy? Um, I, 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 he's doing just as, you know, I didn't even have to train him for this one. He, he's knocking it out of the park. So, um, I think I, I raised him right. I'm just here because he's never bought a car before. All right. That's cool. That, that is a huge step. That is one of those things that makes you feel like you're all grown up. Absolutely. Kyle Petty was buying kitchen utensils at Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> oh boy. He was on in front of you. So that's why getting married will do to you. <laughs> Uh, Lee, lots, uh, 
we were just talking a minute ago, Wendy and I. This is about as quiet an off season as we can remember. Do you agree? Disagree? I don't know. I thought I was kind of working overtime and and had all the crew chief news early on, and then some crew chief news throughout the season, and then the dairy and grub news today. So I think I've I've kind of kept up with it. But uh, I've been busy. I don't know about everybody else. I think we've been kind of working, and I think there's been a lot of movement in the off season. A lot of crew chief changes going on, and people are looking for what that next step is going to be. And of course, uh, let's go ahead and touch on that dairy and grub news. It kind of—I think a lot of people were kind of wondering where he was going to surface. Oh well, you know, absolutely. But we're better for Gary to end up at Hendrick Motorsports when you think about it, because. You know, Darian started his career with Rick Hendrick, and then to be able to to come back there, and um, you know, and Wendy will know this because he she knows where he's been the last few years. If you're coming from the championship organization, boy, you got a whole new playbook uh, of information to take with you and and bring it back to Hendrick Motorsports. So I think it's a win win for everybody. So Lee, in your um when you wrote this story about Daria Grubb, the newly created position, vehicle production director is the title they've given Darian. Have you had a chance to to talk to him or anyone over at Hendrick on what that entails? I uh, just got a little bit of information. I talked to uh, Darian in the off season, basically, you know, said he couldn't talk about anything until January 1, and I haven't circled back. And so we just got back in, you know, to North Carolina and, and, uh, we did a little work for Sirius last week and then uh, went to the Panthers game yesterday. So uh, things, you know, kind of shook out today. They asked me about it on Sirius and uh, just, you know, kind of went forward with it and, and did the story. But um, he's going to be working with Kenny Francis and they're going to report to Doug Ducard. And, um, you know, I, I think it's a, just one of those situations that's custom tailored for Darian. Darian's such a smart guy and with his engineering background, um, I think he's really going to be an asset in his return to Hendrick Motorsports. And it's going to be interesting to see how he interfaces with the rest of the guys. I mean, he knows the people. He knows the systems. It's going to be like coming right back home. So, Lee, is Cam Newton the MVP of the NFL? <laughs> I don't know how you would argue against that. Boy, he had another great day yesterday. And uh, he, he's just, you know, he put on an electrifying performance really Really got a kick out of watching. That was our first live football game of uh, 2016 and, you know, the whole 2015-2016 season. So it was great to see um, how well that, that group performs together. I mean, they they really have their A game. Um, it, it's it's going to be fun to see how far they get in the playoffs. So, Lee, did you get much time off? I know you were working and covering all these crew chief swaps. You get to a yeah. football game, but did you get a chance to disconnect at all? Well, as most of you guys know, in December we go to Hawaii and, and get a little downtime. But um, when when news breaks, I don't care if it's 4 or 5 a.m. Uh, Hawaii time, we, we, you know, hack at it and, and get it up and go. And so, um, you know, it's uh, our, our business really never stops. And, I mean, there are little stories that kind of go unmentioned. But, um, you know, there, there's so much going on. It's just in constant flux. And if you want to get better and if you want to compete at the best level, you know, top level in NASCAR, you have to be evolving. And, and we saw a lot of that. I mean, I can't remember a time when we've had as many crew chief changes as we've had in this off season. And it's really, you know, it's it's really exciting to see what the potentials are for these driver and, you know, new new driver crew chief combinations for 2016. What do you think are going to be the top storylines? Give me your first two top storylines of 2016 as we approach media tour and speed weeks in February. Well, I mean, I, I think there's one on the track and one off the track. On the track, it's going to be the new car and who steps up with the new car, who can perform with the new car. I think it'll play in, in the hands of a lot of drivers that, that really have struggled with the, um, you know, with the, the Gen 6 package. And so, uh, you know, I think from a competition level, that's going to be the you know top story we're looking at. Off the track, it's the RTA. You know, how long before the RTA, uh, the the charter system comes to fruition, and and how that all comes into place and and gets going. And um, I, I kind of look at you know both things, and um, you know, the NASCAR is working overtime to get the the product on the track as strong as it can possibly be. We saw that they weren't willing. They weren't afraid to take a chance 
throughout the season trying to low down force, high down force, different packages to see what put on the best product on the racetrack. Off the, off the racetrack, if we want the sport to be healthy, we really have to have the backing um, you know, of the owners, the, the team ownership, that side of the equation needs to be healthy as well. And when you have the two working in concert, then I think you're going to have the best sport overall. Do you think we'll see that this year? Is there going to be some sort of, I've heard it called a medallion system or something akin to a franchise in place when we roll into the new year? Well, it's kind of funny because nobody wants to use that dreaded F word, right? No. So, um, they've kind of glossed over it and called it a charter system, and so that's kind of what they're looking at are charters. They're talking about 36 charters, 40 teams all together, so there would be 36 guaranteed spots on the racetrack, then four additional spots for people that are looking to come in, you know, perhaps on a, a week-to-week basis and just kind of, you know, jump in and, and have the opportunity to race. And so I think that that's kind of, you know, we're, what we're looking at. And, and uh, it's going to be interesting because it's going to change the dynamic of what the race team structures look like, you know, who is guaranteed spots, who aren't. Um, you know, there are teams that we might not see – um, have the same number of teams going into either this season or next once those charters are, are doled out because you want to know that you're guaranteed a spot when you're going in there, and, and that's not necessarily going to be a case for all these race teams. Lee, we asked Kyle Petty this a few moments ago, and I want to get your opinion. You know, last year with Jeff Gordon's final season, he was the go-to guy that the media would listen to. He was the voice of a lot of the drivers. Now that he stepped off the platform, who do you feel is the next driver to step up and be that voice for the drivers? Um, Boy, that, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, if you look at the drivers' union, that guy, their representative is Denny Hamlin. Now, um, I think somebody like Jeff Gordon, who has four championships behind him, you know, is, is the perfect go-to person to to really hold that mantle. But you have to talk about somebody that really has um, a kind of background that, that, you know, plays into that, that is really going to be, um, you know, somebody who has leadership skills, someone who understands the product on and off the track. I mean, Tony Stewart, if he wanted to be that guy, could be that guy because he's a team owner, because he's a driver, because he's a championship. I just don't, you know, I just don't know how um, willing he would be to take over that role. But I mean, you know, he would certainly be qualified to be that guy. Yeah, I think others have mentioned uh, Jimmy Johnson. Obviously, you win six championships, you carry a lot of moxie. Kevin Harvick. Absolutely. Uh, I think would be a good person. And then Kyle Petty mentioned, and, and Wendy and I both agreed, Dale Jr. could do that if he wanted to because he sure carries enough heavy weight with the fans, and NASCAR has to listen to him. Well, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, Dale Jr., when Dale Jr. speaks, people listen. And, you know, quite frankly, you won't find a better historian of NASCAR than Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's just a guy who really looks at the whole sport, you know, has lived the sport, um, probably, you know, kind of along the lines of Kyle Petty. And they they have the right to speak about it because, you know, their daddies were champions and they did have that opportunity to watch the evolution of the sport. And, you know, they have quite a passion for the sport. So I think that all plays into it. Um, You know, I like hearing what Kyle has to say because um, you just really feel how much he cares about it and wants to see the sport healthy. Um, you know, you mentioned Jimmy Johnson. It's whether or not he wants to step up and be that guy. I mean, certainly he's got the pedigree. Um, you know, he's got the, the resume, rather, to do it and, you know, could be that the person to step up as well. Well, Lee, thank you very much. Tell people where they can uh, find your fine work. Oh, motorsport.com. And uh, we're going to have a lot of great uh, preview uh, preview features going into this season. So, uh Stay tuned. I think we'll have a couple of other stories uh, popping up this week that uh, fans will be interested in. All right. We'll see you on Media Tour, Lee. Take care. Thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. Lee Spencer, she's one of the tops in the business. She writes for motorsport.com. Back with more Fast Talk.
Here's George Foreman with InventHelp. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new New ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. To get your free inventor's information, call 1-800-604-7561. That's 1-800-604-7561. Again, 1-800-604-7561. This is Jimmy Johnson, and you're listening to Fast Talk on PRN. Presented by Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. Hi, this is Brett McMillan, host of PRN's O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters. Each week, the top insiders in the garage join me for an unfiltered roundtable discussion of the week's hottest topics. They've decided Matt Kenseth has gone over the line. I think absolutely, other than taking way too freaking long to make this announcement, the NASCAR did do the right thing by parking Kenseth. Sometimes good people do bad things, and he gets a little vacation for it. The O'Reilly Auto Parts Pit Reporters on the Performance Racing Network. NASCAR returns to the historic Atlanta Motor Speedway for the Fools of Honor Quick Trip 500 weekend, February 26th to the 28th. Experience the high-speed thrills of one of racing's original super speedways. Starting as low as $39, it's one of NASCAR's most affordable deals. Plus, don't worry about the weather. We've got you covered with a perfect race weather guarantee. Be a part of racing history in 2016. Call 877-9-AMS-TIX or visit amsracetix.com. Appreciate Lee Spencer from Motorsport.com being on the show. Also, Kyle Petty, Wendy Venturini is my co-host. I'm Doug Rice. And, Wendy, I, I did not prep you on this because I wanted to get your honest response. Give me three drivers, three drivers in 2016 that need to step up, that their performance needs to jump precipitously from what we saw last year. Danica Patrick. I agree, totally. Um you know, it's funny. I, da- do- I think Danica needs to be in the chase this year. I, I, yeah. Enough of finishing I, back in the 20s. Get to the chase. Yeah, You got I the agree. finances. You got the team. Get to the chase. It would be great for the sport. It would be great for Danica. I agree. Uh, step it up. Ooh, I hope these fans don't. I, that's who, that's who I was going to say. Casey Kane. I'm sorry, ladies. I know you're going to hate me, but Casey Kane needs to step it up. Yep. Oh, I like him. I like him as a person. Uh, Doesn't have anything to do with it. But performance isn't there. Like Danica's a person, but it's not I know, there. I love Danica. Yeah, um, so Casey Kane is my is my other one. I I want to put Tony Stewart, but I don't because he's retiring, and I want him yeah. to enjoy his last year. I mean, yes, he... Do I want him in the chase? Do I want him to win races? Yes. But like Kyle Petty says, really, the only thing Tony Stewart needs to do is show up. The yeah. fans want to send him off and say goodbye. So uh, I don't think he necessarily needs to be that third driver. Do you feel he needs to be? No, I, you know, that's I, I hadn't thought about that. He said, I'm going to give him a pass because he's it's his his, his his exit year. I would love to see him win a race. He could easily win one of these races. He's done it plenty of times before. It's going to be tough, though, from a driver who finished behind Danica most of the year to being somebody that's going to jump up and win races. We mm-hmm. know he can. It's it's there. It's in his DNA, but I don't, I don't know. Um uh, Wow, uh, a third one, but this this would be a whole organization. So I'll pick somebody out of there because they, they struggle mightily. Would be Roush Fenway or any driver for Roush Fenway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. B- uh, Biffle comes to mind. Yeah, Biffle. I mean, because yeah, he's he the lead, he's the lead he sled dog over there. Yeah, you know, he's the guy that's got race wins. He's the guy that's got truck championships and Xfinity titles and multiple Cup wins. 
And we don't need to see him running around in 15. And he is a new crew chief with Brian Patty coming over uh, to Roush Fenway to fill in for Matt Pusha. And, of course, uh, Brian Patty came over from Michael Walter Bracing. So he started his new position in December, I know. Brian's getting settled in, and he's forming his team, and he's brought a couple Michael Waltrip guys uh, guys over to Biffle's team. So I'm curious how, you know, it's not until we get to testing or yeah. uh, we get to speed weeks, we start to see where all the people fell, where, where all I the know. chips fell. I, but you, uh, I will tell people this, and the, and the smart race fans already know this, Daytona can give you a false read. Somebody can take a fast piece down to Daytona, and as long as they don't crash it, they can look unbeatable and then reality sets in when you get to the mile and a half tracks because you got atlanta and vegas coming up right after that so don't let the fool's gold of daytona blind you to performance either bad or good it can work both ways that's what i love about the prn schedule is that we they get daytona out of the way and then the racing starts (laughs) we get to cover it and we get to tell the storylines and and really see who's shaken out to be um true competitors for 2016 who stepped up to the plate and who still needs work. And we're going to see that new low down force package, mm-hmm. which we saw twice last year. I don't, it, it won't be exactly like that, but we saw it on display at Kentucky and then again at Darlington, and it produced some pretty nice racing. I windy. loved the racing with that with that style car. I, yeah. I mean, it was fun to call. It was fun to watch. It was entertaining for the fans. The drivers loved it. There was a lot of positive things that came out of those two events. You know, and I and we're going to see that across the board at the intermediate tracks. I hope that somebody in the NASCAR wizard shop, you know, Ryan Pemberton's not there anymore. That's a big void, too, by yeah, the way. Yeah, that was. That was that was big uh, news. That uh, was news that happened in that the off-season. That was big news. Yeah, I mean, season. you don't lose a guy that has that kind of heritage and that kind of merit and it not be noticed. But what I was going to say, I hope they can come up with something that makes the show at Indianapolis look better. I don't know what that is, but that is a grand racetrack. It is a splendid facility, and the racing there on the NASCAR level has just not been compelling over the years. Right. That's that's a track that you just don't want them to show up. Yeah. You want them to race. You want it to be spectacular because it's a spectacular event, and um, there's a lot of history and and. I feel like it's not holding up to it right you now. You just don't want to show up. You want to show out. Right. Smoother than a fresh jar, Skippy. <laughs> I digress. Sorry, I had to work in the obligatory uptown funk mention there. So, this is Fast Talk, the Performance Racing You're Network. You're so hip. <laughs> I am marginally with it here on Fast Talk. Time to winterize or store your power equipment. Add ZMAX Microlubricant to the fuel system and crankcase for easier starts this winter and next spring. ZMAX Microlubricant for two or four stroke gas or diesel engines, chainsaws, snow and leaf blowers, ATVs, boat engines, generators, tillers, lawnmowers, tractors, everyday driver, or storing a collector car. Cold starts are easier with ZMAX Microlubricant. Get the story at ZMAX.com and get ZMAX Microlubricant at auto parts retailers everywhere. NASCAR's best drivers. Joey Logano out in front by a nose. Check. NASCAR's best Kevin racing. Harvick is there as well. Matt Kenseth drops back. All right, and here comes Earnhardt. Check. Guaranteed perfect race day weather. Check. That's right. Guaranteed. Introducing the perfect race day weather guarantee. Only at Atlanta Motor Speedway's Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500. February 28th. Call 877-9-AMS-TIX or visit amsracetix.com for details. This is Dale Hart Jr., and you're listening to Fast Talk on PRN. Presented by Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. It's Racing Home with Wendy Venturini, presented by Coca-Cola, and brought to you by Exergen. And this week, I'm racing home with crew chief Darian Grupp. You have a busy life with uh, wife Yolanda and your two children. So talk about how you balance that as a dad. That's probably the hardest part of this job is being able to have a family. Luckily, I'm blessed to be able to take them with me a lot of the times. Racing Home is a presentation of PRN, the Performance Racing Network. 
I am Major General Chuck Swanick, U.S. Army retired and executive director of Speedway Children's Charities. Since 1982, our mission has been to care for children in educational, financial, social, and medical need in order to help them lead productive lives. Through the help of our Austin fans and partners, last year we granted over $2 million benefiting 370 children's programs in your surrounding communities. Learn more about how you can get involved by visiting speedwaycharities.org. Just to sort of uh, bring people up to date, Performance Racing Network, even though we've been around for a long time, I get the constant questions, and I'm sure you do, Wendy. Well, what's the difference between you and MRN? And we get along great with the folks that wear the blue shirts. Um, They're all guys and gals trying to cover the sport just like we are. We are primarily the radio network for Speedway Motorsports, Bruton and Marcus Smith's company. That's kind of the easiest way. Isn't Isn't that a f- fair statement absolutely if somebody asks me i say i cover the smi tracks yeah so we we do the smi tracks we have a joint venture deal that we have worked with indianapolis motor speedway to do the brickyard 400 and and, and we wear red and we wear red it's a good color on us there doug you thank you thank you well it brings out <laughs> a nice skin tone doug is wearing people. red tonight and a blazer yeah well and i'm wearing active i'm wear. trying to get well you <laughs> you do active wear better than i do and i'm trying to get the, off to a right start. I could have come in in a hoodie because it's chilly. I could have gotten away with it. Yes. I could have worn an App State hoodie tonight. Nobody would have complained. Even, you know, the seven people watching the video stream would have probably enjoyed that. So that's what we've got. We've got the SMI tracks, and that's how it breaks down. It's ISC primarily for the Motor Racing Network, and we have our weekly shows and our daily shows, and we have a crew of people that are very, very passionate about how they broadcast and how the broadcast sounds. We have wonderful people behind the scenes, and sometimes I don't feel like we recognize all these folks, Wendy, because it takes somewhere between 15 and 20 people on a given Saturday or Sunday to put on one of these broadcasts. It's it's an in-depth adventure, and we've got folks at all layers that know what they're doing, and that makes our job on the air a whole lot easier. Oh, yeah, there's people behind the scenes that are way smarter than me, so they're pressing buttons and making sure it all works. They they do a fabulous job. And, uh, you know, traveling all across the country, we get to cover, I, I think PRN covers all the cool racetracks because we have, well, Charlotte, our home, our backyard, yep. of course. We have Las Vegas. We have Atlanta. We have Bristol. We have Texas. We have Loudoun, which I love to go to Loudoun. Yep. We have Sonoma, wine country. Yep. Uh, bonus. <laughs> yeah, bonus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We if, get all the cool tracks. If man. <laughs> Sonoma was setting out in the middle of the Mojave Desert, I go, really? We got to go back there again? But the fact that it literally bumps up to wine country. But I just wanted to take a second. You know, we have a great crew just yeah. to put this show on. Usually we have our production director, Kent Bernhardt, Laura Beth Barnhart, Harold Hamrick, Alicia Smoot, now formerly Lingerfelt, Alexis Perkins. Just to name a few of the folks that help this production get done on a weekly basis. So, uh, and 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 I'm sure it is the same for MRN and the guys in blue. They have a lot of people that are always making their shows as good as they can possibly make them. So, I, I'm saying that to kind of. Uh, I know people are enamored by what goes on in the television industry and how many trucks they bring and all of the technology that goes to bear there. Uh, there is a lot that goes on underneath the waterline in the radio business. And I was blown away. Uh, obviously, what, 12 years in television before you guys uh, allowed me to come over to PRN and do radio. So <laughs> yeah. it was a big change. You guys are professionals, man. You are on it. The, the, I mean, I really had to step up my, my A game to, to step up to Doug Rice's level. Well, we had a lot of fun. <laughs> we have uh, we have we have some diehard listeners uh, that pay attention to everything we do. Um, Very detail-oriented. Yes. We have to paint a lot of pictures, which well, is cool. It it's is, fun. It, it is a fun job. We enjoy it immensely. Um, our own Alexis Perkins' mom, Elizabeth Perkins, is a diehard listener. She's in Puerto Rico and listens and sends us notes while the broadcast is going on during Fast Talk. 
That's but devotion. But we're not checking them during the broadcast. No. So, <laughs> folks, thanks a lot. Special thanks tonight to Kyle Petty for carving out time from his Bed Bath & Beyond visit. Lee Spencer was helping her son buy a car, but she dropped what she was doing to talk to us. Check out her work on motorsport.com. Special thanks to my co-host, as always, good friend, Wendy Venturini. And you know what? We'll adjourn, but we will rejoin next Monday for a whole bunch more Fast Talk. You've been listening to Fast Talk on the Performance Racing Network, presented by Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans. New styles and great fits. Try on a pair today. Wrangler. Real. Comfortable. Jeans. And brought to you by Napa. Stop by your local Napa Auto Parts store and conquer the job with Napa know-how. By Wix. Visit Wix Filter's Facebook page and share your love for engines. Wix. We love engines. Advance Auto Parts. Advance Auto Parts introduces Speed Perks, a simple rewards program for guys who love getting under the hood. This is PRN, the Performance Racing Network. <laughs>